It was the Oto tribe that prospered off of the mighty Platte River that dissects this state. In their description of the tributary, which translates to flat water, lent itself to the state's name. It was the 37th state admitted to the Union. It's in the heart of Tornado Alley, and it's the only triply landlocked state. But as most people know, it's famously called the Cornhusker State. Welcome to Nebraska. From the distilled till plains of Omaha, to the state capital of Lincoln, to the prairie expanse of the western frontier, each region of Nebraska has been an integral part in the telling of the American story. Whether it's Lewis and Clark, the Oregon Trail, or the Union Pacific, Western Nebraska in particular has served as a critical region for passers-by. The most notable group to pass through Western Nebraska were settlers following the Oregon Trail. This is Chimney Rock National Historic Site, a popular landmark along the Oregon, California, and Mormon trails. All three of these trails pass close by to the rock, and the 300-foot tall steeple served as a navigational aid. In fact, Chimney Rock is shorter today than it was in the 1800s, as lightning, erosion, and other factors have caused the peak to wither. Another prominent natural feature along the Oregon Trail was Scott's Bluff. Today, this area is a national monument and includes two adjacent bluffs, South Bluff and Scott's Bluff. In total, there are five rock formations at the site. The naming of this part of the Badlands has quite a harrowing backstory. The tale goes that in 1825, a fur trapping party traveling up the Nebraska River decided to abandon a member of their group, the severely ill Hiram Scott. They claimed that he was dying from disease anyway, and the following summer the exact same party stumbled upon his remains. However, they were near a group of rock formations some 60 miles from where they abandoned Scott a year prior. The nearby city of Scottsbluff was named for the monument and was founded in 1899. It's the largest city in Nebraska's Panhandle, and together with the town of Gearing across the North Platte River, these twin cities of the plains form the state's seventh largest urban area. The crown jewel of Gearing is none other than Oregon Trail Park. Located just a stone's throw from downtown, the recreational area has diverse amenities to meet the entertainment needs of the whole family. A 15-story tall water slide is the highlight of the aquatic attractions in the park, but the facility's emphasis is most definitely on athletics. Horseshoe pits, beach volleyball courts, tennis courts, and 16 ball fields are scattered throughout the park, but it's one ball field in particular where a third summer of memories will soon be made. That ball field is Oregon Trail Park Stadium. It's the home of the Western Nebraska Pioneers, a summer collegiate club which competes in the Expedition League. Headquartered in Rapid City, South Dakota, this seven-team circuit came into existence in May of 2017. Just fell in love with the area. You know, um, we were we were really tired of living in Phoenix. It's it's hot and there's traffic and it's all, it's getting worse. And we came up here and, and my wife will tell you we parked the car up on the monument at the park and just walked around and just just like you know you can go somewhere. You can go somewhere. I, I've always been up here. You can go somewhere and in 20 minutes you know if it's a place you want to be. And that's how we felt about Nebraska. And so we got this opportunity. Uh, we had a very good uh, uh, relationship to get this thing going and, and it's been great. We're going into our third year, and it's, it's just been fantastic. While most summer collegiate leagues have existed for decades, the Expedition League is the new kid on the block. Beginning play in 2018, the league enters 2020 with just two seasons under its belt. But in the chronological blink of an eye, the Expedition League has solidified itself as a beloved baseball attraction in America's heartland.
One of the smartest things the League has done is to identify with exactly what this region is known for, westward expansion. Following the Louisiana Purchase, President Thomas Jefferson sent Meriwether Lewis and William Clark on an expedition to the Pacific in order to examine the recently purchased frontier. The Expedition League sticks with that theme, as member clubs are divided into the Lewis and Clark divisions. The league now consists of 10 teams scattered across four Midwest states and one Canadian province, with five teams in each division. The Pioneers were a charter member of the Expedition League, and it's been a successful first two years. In their inaugural season, the Pioneers won the league championship over the Badlands Big Sticks. In 2019, the Pioneers won the Clark Division, ultimately finishing as the runners-up. The Heartland is known for its gritty yet laid-back demeanor. A game and gearing will be a very pleasing experience for baseball purists. While the fan experience at many ballparks includes countless frills and loud noises, a night at Oregon Trail Park Stadium directs the focus back toward the great game of baseball with a proper dose of in-game cues and entertainment. Sports fans in the Cornhusker State are notoriously loyal. For example, the University of Nebraska has sold out every football game since 1962. That passion extends to the panhandle of the state as well. Pioneers fans pack their stadium regularly, and they're known to make some noise. Many familiar with collegiate summer baseball will tell you the Pioneers have some of the best fans around. They're mostly known for Western Nebraska Thunder, the phenomenon of stomping the metal bleachers in order to generate noise and will their Pios to another victory. One of those things that, that people really, um, over the two years that we've been here going into our third, have really taken to. Yeah. It's the second week of July when the home of the Pioneers shines the brightest. Oregon Trail days are when Gearing and Scotts Bluff really come alive attracting tourists from around the nation. Nebraska's longest running festival features carnivals, car shows, barbecues, wine, beer tastings, parades, cook-offs, concerts, and more. Normally the festival would coincide with the Pioneer's homestand, but due to the coronavirus pandemic, the 2020 festival has been pushed back to late August. It's not a baseball team. It's a place to bring your family and have some fun and be able to afford to do it. It's, it's, it's the minor league model. You know, uh, we, you can ask people when they leave the game, you know, 80% of them will never won the game, but they know they had fun. So it, it, it was, it's up to us to kind of make sure that stays that way. It's a tourism destination for, this, for a part of the state where there's not a lot else here. So that's one of the reasons we've been successful is because people come out, they have a good time, it's a place where they can gather, that's, that's, um, and it's a great atmosphere. You'll see as you go around the park, it's a great place to watch the game. Uh, we do what I think is a fairly good job of entertaining people. So the idea from day one is to create that community asset. You know, on our end, it's a business. We do, you know, we operate it as a business, but with always that in mind, what can we do to make this thing more of an asset than it already is? I gotta tell you folks, this is Summer of Collegiate Baseball's best kept secret here, Oregon Trail Park Stadium. The weather is beautiful, is the most relaxing place to watch a game that I've been to that I can remember, and the fans are here to watch the game. The focus is on the field behind me and not on the cell phones. That's something that we can all get excited about. That special baseball ambiance is in the air here, and America's pastime is alive and well. If you find yourself in western Nebraska, where the West really begins, and if you're itching to experience the sights and sounds that we all dearly miss, a stop at Oregon Trail Park Stadium is a must.